This is Polaroid, my handy virtual cameraman who I created last year to help me film all my crazy cool YouTube videos inside the Unity game engine. And this is Polaroid Mark II. Looks exactly the same, you say. <laughs> you think you can come into my house and critique my stuff? Get out of here. I don't even want you watching. Polaroid Mark II is a technical marvel of virtual filmmaking. Packed inside this head is a vast array of secret features designed to fix some of the problems I had while filming with Polaroid Mark I. So we're not going to be needing this anymore. <laughs> Polaroid was originally created for one purpose, to add a more human feeling camera movement to my YouTube videos. And you can learn more about the exact details in this video here. But as a quick recap, he mostly uses a combination of inverse kinematics on his legs and some subtle movement on his head to achieve that bouncy effect. But over the past year since his creation, uh, I really haven't used him that much. I'm sorry, son. The big problem was that even for a robot, Polaroid is pretty dumb. Sure, he had an automated feature where he could ping pong between two points that I could place in the scene, but the whole setup was a pain. Most of the time I'd be controlling him with a controller like a real fuppus game. But with a production crew of just one flower man, it's almost impossible to be both talent and camera operator at the same time. And what if I wanted to walk and talk? The technology just wasn't there yet. I needed a hands-free solution. So I threw out that old controller of mine, went down the rabbit hole of voice activation. All right, so check this out. Hey, Polaroid, look at me. Eye level. Follow me. Pretty cool, eh? For this, I use Meta's Voice SDK for Unity, which uses their Wit AI voice recognition service. So I can rest easy knowing that all my voice data is being sent straight to Marky Mark's aluminum brain for him to jerk off to. Get some better taste like me. Babe, did you even watch those videos I sent you? Of course you didn't. All I asked you to do was make a sugar cane farm. Not even that complicated. Wit is pretty cool because you can define custom voice commands for it to listen to and it will analyze the audio and send you back its best guess to whatever application you're using. In my case, Unity. And maybe I'm just too swirly brain for this world because I could not figure out how to implement it right. Now, I don't know if Mark just forgot to update the documentation, but even after following it word for word, nothing seemed to work. Even their own example project is built differently than how they describe it. Viewers of the channel already know I'm not the most germinated flower, but I swear it's gotta be a Zuckerborgian thing. Ultimately, I got it working by just ignoring the documentation and copying how the example project did it instead. Now, Polaroid's got a couple of different commands to help me move him around and set up the shot. I can say, look at me. And then I could say, stop looking at me. I can also say something like eye level. And he'll crouch down until he's eye level right here with my head. I can also adjust him slightly by saying something like lower or higher. Higher, higher, why won't you listen to me? And if I'm feeling merciful, I could say something like, stand up, and that'll reset him to a standing position. I can also have him adjust his distance between him and me by using a couple of commands. If I say something like, follow me, I can move around and he'll stay following me, trying to keep a, a, a specific vector between the two of us. That's how we get these impossible walking shots. And when I'm done with that, I could say, Stop following me. Recording is also hands-free. If I say record, you'll start to see that his little beauty mark will blink, which it's doing right now. And if I wanna end the shot, I'll say cut, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't wanna ruin this video. It's like a real film set and you're stuck with me. Now these commands talk directly to OBS and you've actually probably noticed the little blinking antenna on the top of his head. That's just an indicator to let me know that he's connected and he's talking to it properly. Usually it's just blinking red, but it'll start to blink blue after I finished a shot, just to give me an indication that OBS is still encoding. All in all, these commands help me to control Polaroid hands-free while still getting those human looking shots he was originally designed for. Well, more human than the average robot or a certain Facebook executive I know. So that's all we got for this mode. Did I say this mode? How silly of me. He has three of them. All right, Polaroid, activate drone mode. 
Wait, no, 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 no. We like to mix things up cinematologically here in the Addy Valley. So the first two of Polaroid's three alternate modes are dedicated to giving me a little more creative freedom. In drone mode, Polaroid is free from the confines of his bouncy body and moves smoothly with the help of his whittled drone wings. Originally, I was wanting to go with a design that looked like the wings of a beetle. Uh, I don't really think it came across. I didn't want to deviate too much from his original silhouette, so concessions had to be made. In this mode, we can get aerial drone shots, static overhead shots, or even smooth tracking shots. And in drone mode, he still listens to all the same commands that he did in walker mode. Look at me. Eye level. Follow me. See, check it out. When I'm tired of being looked down on, I could say something like, let's land. And Polaroid will go back to his body from wherever we are and land. With both walker and drone mode, I've got a lot of cinematic control. And yet, I still don't trust some damn robot to get all my shots for me. They're taking our jobs, our copies of Quest for Camelot in special edition DVD. All right, buddy, give me the camera. And look, it floats like a real video game. I've played one of those before. Now I call this mode handheld mode. And what you saw is that when activating it, his head will detach, come to me and deliver his inner core, which will transform into this little camcorder here. Oh no, he's got no brains. When in handheld mode, I could film from my own perspective. It's not really that different. And it's got this little viewfinder on the back so that I too can see from my own perspective. So that's what it's like to be me. I would have never guessed. The best part about this mode is I can now film my unhinged rants for TikTok. Hey Mark. You think passing around my photo to your security staff is going to do anything? I got within 15 feet of your front gate last time. Love you. Bye. In handheld mode, the only voice commands available to me are the cut and record commands. But when I'm done trying to get myself on the FBI's most wanted list, I can say, take the camera back. Which brings us to the last and most powerful of Polaroid's camera modes. Polaroid, activate teleprompter mode. Now, unlike the first two modes that are mostly used to help me control the look and feel of a video, teleprompter mode helps me actually make my YouTube videos faster. Before implementing a teleprompter directly onto Polaroid, I was using this handheld one and a remote to control it. Anytime I wanted to film a new video, I would have to load it up into Unity, load the script onto the text element of the teleprompter and export a new build every time. Since it floats, I could place it in the scene somewhere next to a camera and then read off of that, scrolling through the script using the remote, like I said. The problem with this is that if the teleprompter and the camera are separate, sometimes you could be looking at the script instead of looking at the camera, and the remote isn't exactly hands-free. But Polaroid Mark II's teleprompter mode fixes all of that. Instead of making a new build every time, I can load a script into a specified folder on my computer. Polaroid can detect when a script has been added and then generate a JSON file that splits up our script into lines that can be loaded directly into Unity. Nice. And at the same time, he creates a new project directory with all sorts of subfolders, including the video subfolder, where we will automatically drop all of our recorded footage during the filming session. And multiple scripts can be loaded onto Polaroid at the same time, but I can use a voice command to select the one I want to record. See, there's our slide. And I'm not just saying that because somebody's telling me to. When I want to scrub between slides, I can say next or previous slide. And after we're done recording a take, Polaroid will automatically drop that file into the project folder, naming it in accordance to the current shot and current take, which makes it a lot easier for me to sift through while editing. And when I'm done recording all my slides for the script, 
I can say, that's a wrap, and Polaroid will complete the project and then process the audio for every video file in the project folder. You fucking know it's crazy. First, you will detach the audio from the recorded MKV files, run them through a denoiser, de-reverb, EQ, compressor, limiter, and then reattach them to the video as a converted MP4 so that the shot is compatible and ready to be used in Adobe Premiere. Just like shots for this video. Hello. Trying to fit all the transformations for Polaroid's different modes into his model was the longest, but probably the most fun part of this project. I tried to construct it in a way that looked believable and really freaking sick while still trying to keep with the original character design. I may have added some extra lines and IQ points in the process, but I really try to not deviate too far from his original silhouette. Because if I learned anything from watching Pokemon, silhouette is the most important part of character design. In the future, I think it'd be fun to add some features to his body, like uh, wheels or some cool all-terrain spider mode. Ah, sometimes I wonder if I'm wasting too much time working all this film production bullshit. But hey, if you want to see more of it or have any ideas or what I should add to Polaroid, let me know in the comments. Polaroid takes a picture of Addy's butt. Ha 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 ha. Oh, Polaroid. All right, well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. Mwah. If I could catch up.